All right, hey guys, this is Vol, and welcome to my coverage of NatCon, which is a term that refers to the National uh, New Zealand Wargaming Tournament, of which uh, Warhammer Fantasy was a category, and I was entered into it. Now, this was in Hamilton, which is about an hour's drive south from Auckland, and uh, we spent the whole Easter weekend there playing games. Well, not Monday, I'm doing this commentary on Monday. And uh, what I want to do first is just take, talk you through all of the armies that uh, entered the tournament, uh, or at least all the armies that I took pictures of anyway. I took uh, pictures of about, um, well... Maybe 75 percent of the armies that were there, and I'll just uh, just point out some features of them, and uh, then we'll go into actual battle reports of how the games went. Now there were there were, there were eight games, eight games, over three days, uh, two on the last, uh, three on the other two, and uh, yeah, it was just a really good time. And uh, more about the games later. I'm just going to talk about what armies people took. So this first uh, first army here is Ogre Kingdoms, as you can see. Uh, a few nice conversions here, especially the two main models in the front. I didn't get to play this guy, but I uh, definitely like his theme, very sort of icy. He's done a lot of conversions here by the looks. Uh, these aren't straight out of the box Ogres. Some of them are, uh, are conversions of them, and I think a couple of them might be from other model ranges, but not too sure. He's got two uh, groups of Yetis, uh, very interestingly, and a lot of Noblars, so a little bit of a, a fluffy Ogre list, I think. Let's go to the next photo where we uh, continue. This is Mike Thorne's Dwarves, and this guy actually won the award at the end of the tournament for Best Painted Army, and you can sort of see why. He's uh, washed them up really nice. He's actually put these stickers on the shields, which look look brilliant. They're so detailed, and uh, every single model is just uh, well detailed, well painted, and uh, very great theme for this army. By the way, the bolt throwers on the, the single base on the left-hand side of the photo He's actually using them to represent an organ gun. So you see three bolt throwers there. He's counting it as an organ gun. But I'm just going to give you a close-up, just so you can see in a bit more detail why this guy won the, won the prize. Uh, the painting on these guys are very, very nice, as you can see. Everything looks immaculate. Nice... Uh, Nice shading and, and so forth, So and, and the bases are done very well too. So uh, there you have it, that's Mike Thorne's Dwarf Army, and he did very well. Um, I actually played this guy in the tournament, so I'll give you a battle report on how that went later on. Next picture, it looks like we've got, I think this is Thomas's uh, Lizard Army. He's taken a couple of engines of the gods, and man, I'm glad I didn't play this guy, because uh, I really think I would have had some trouble against his dinosaurs there. He's got some serious blocks of... Uh, of Saurus Warriors too, and some Coldwin Riders on the right hand side, so this is looking pretty impressive. Uh, I think this guy did pretty well in the end uh, with, with his Lizards, so uh, congrats to him. Next photo, we've got, got a Dark Elf player, and there were many, many Dark Elf players at this tournament. I think they were the most popular race at the tournament, uh, very powerful, and you can, you can tell why uh, Dark Elves do so well. I think this is Darren Urquhart's uh, army, and he actually scored very highly at the end of the tournament. Uh, the standout piece of this army is the Cauldron of Blood in the middle there with the conversion of the spider. So I'm just going to go to the next picture to zoom in on that. This is amazing. This is like a spider woman statue with blood just fountaining out of her mouth into the cauldron. Absolutely brilliant. Just a centerpiece of his army. And all the rest of his, his guys are painted up very well, as you can see. So just an incredible effort from Darren um, with this army. <laughs> I didn't actually get to play him, but I know that he did very well on battle points as well, just winning games and so forth. Very nice, interesting shields too on the uh, Spearman on the right-hand side. But uh, yeah, that, that Cauldron of Blood just takes the cake as far as I'm concerned. Next picture, this is uh, this is Joe Dixon's uh, High Elf Army. Very impressive. Love the color scheme. Uh, very unusual dark green, sort of almost Dark Angel's green uh, color scheme from the elves. And it really works. Uh, with the contrast on that white, it's just beautiful. And uh, he's got the Star Dragon list. He's the only guy entering the tournament with a Star Dragon. Uh, this guy actually entered a tournament with his brother and his father. Three guys uh, from Nelson, which is a, a, a more of a southern city in New Zealand. And these guys did very well. Uh, more about that later. But just look at this guy's army. It's very, very good looking. Uh, very, uh, very good dragon there. It's, it's, it must have been very well balanced because the dragon's only touching the base with that little uh, part of his tail there. And he must have a big rod going underneath there or something to keep it um, upright. But interestingly, he's taken nine dragon princes as well, plus the BSB there. So uh, quite a hefty dragon prince unit. That's not something I would do, but um, it, it worked out well for him. Next picture, we've got uh, demons. There were many demon players at the tournament. Uh, this guy's got some really cool stuff because he's using uh, that that fire unit of 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 demons uh, just next to the rock. I'm not sure if you can see it in the picture if, if you know what I'm talking about. But there's, uh, I think they're meant to be horrors. But he's used these sort of siren type women with big flowing dresses, and it looks really cool. I really love that part of his army, especially. 
my favorite there. So next picture, uh, we've got a Chaos Models army. There were a lot of Chaos Models guys. Notable thing about this guy is he's got a giant pulling a, a cart there that's meant to be a, um, a war altar. But otherwise, it looks like a fairly standard list. He's got a, um, groups of marauders. He's got Chaos Knights. Pr pr typical stuff for Chaos Models, so there you go. Next picture, this is, I think this is Darren uh, Smukar, I think that's how you pronounce his name, is, is Chaos Mortals. I actually played against this guy, so more about that later. He's got a hefty, hefty lord and a Druggernaut there. But the thing about this guy is that he's got heaps of, of uh, just troops. He's got lots of, he's just got lots of models on the field. And they're not really upgraded, they're mainly just undivided. He's got a few guys with Marcus Slanish, but the one hefty unit of knights, and then everything else is uh, blocks of troops, so it's, it's a very good theme, and it's quite soft. It's uh, It got a lot of uh, composition scores just for being uh, for being a, a fairly uh, nice army to play against on the field. Next picture, we've got some more dwarves. Uh, this guy's actually fielding, I think this is Scott Walker, he's got a uh, a dwarf on a um, pair of shield bearers there, which is very cool. Uh, really like that. He's got the slayers as well, just can't get, get past slayers. Didn't actually play this guy, but... Uh, looks like he's got a very sturdy uh, and stout dwarf list. Next uh, picture, this is another dwarf player. It's not the same guy, but he's got a fairly similar army by the looks, but with different war machines. He's got a, is that a flame cannon? I think it is a flame cannon. And a grudge thrower there, as well as the standard blocks of dwarves. Uh, a few thunderers this time, and uh, slayers. Really like the slayers. A lot of people took slayers. Next picture, this is Philip Petrie. A uh, good friend of mine actually got a ride home with him uh, after the tournament. And uh, he's got a Hydra just like everybody else does. He's used, I think, a dipping technique uh, with that stuff that you uh, you put your models into. Uh, I'm not really sure what it does exactly. I think it shades them or highlights them or, or something. But he's got... Um, the nice thing about his list is he's taken a lot of witch shelves. You can't see them too well in the photo, but they're back there. And he's taken a, a Sorcerer and a Pegasus. So, uh, a Sorcerer Lord and a Pegasus. So it's a bit uh, different from the other Dark Elf lists. I think he scored some composition points relative to the other Dark Elf players with this. And I actually did play Phil in the first game, so I'll show you the battle report soon. But, uh, yeah, this, this guy's an all-round nice guy. All right, let's go to the next picture uh, where you see uh, Glenn Tibbles' Elizabeth Army. This is the guy that trashed me in the last tournament, Fluffycon. Uh, and uh, he's now taken a Carnosaur to the uh, to the NatCon event. This guy won the best uh, painted army for FluffyCon as well. Uh, he didn't win it this time, but uh, he probably came close because this is a very, very nice looking army. It's got heaps of these little ferns and, and flora, fauna uh, stuff on it. So uh, really well done to uh, to Glenn. Now this is Al's uh, um, Forest Spirits Wood Elf Army. Oh man, I had to play this guy, and this guy's list is just out of this world. He's got the Treatment Ancient totally tooled up with everything, annoyance of netlings, the spites, everything. And uh, he's got three units of Dryads. He's got the War Dancers, uh, not the War Dancers, he's got the Way Watchers, Treekin, War Hawks. He's got a couple of units of the Wild Riders. This guy's army is just almost unstoppable. It's insane. He's got the two mages. Looks awesome, by the way. Looks really good. But uh, I certainly did not have fun playing against this army. Um, for the most part. I had a little bit of fun, but I can't lie to you, but it was very challenging. So more about that later. Next picture we've got, uh, I think this is Rob Sadler's Demons. Uh, he's a lot of demons here. He's got a lot of horrors and a lot of flamers, a lot of uh, plague bearers, but otherwise it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward demons list. And uh, I think he did pretty well with it. Next picture, Bretonians. Uh, yeah, we had a few Bretonians players at the tournament. This guy's list looks very, uh, very flagrant. He's got the trebuchet in the background. Plenty of uh, troops like to see that. I like seeing the, the peasants. It's very good to see them there. And plenty of knights there. So it look, looks like he's invested most of his points in troops rather than heroes, which is usually the other way around for Bretonians. But even the, even the Pegasus Knights in the background. Didn't play this guy, though. Didn't play any Bretonian players at the tournament. Next picture, we've got uh, Chaos Models. These guys don't seem like they're, they're fully painted, so he probably lost a, uh, a fair few points on, uh, on painting. But uh, again, he's got the standard stuff for Chaos uh, Models. He's got two units of Chaos Knights. I think that's a good choice for Chaos Models is uh, two Knights. And the standard Marauders and, uh, and, and Chaos Warriors and the standard Dogs there as, as well. Next picture, oh, this guy, uh, this guy did very well. This is Harry Dixon. He's the brother of the guy that took the Star Dragon list. And this list is amazing. This is the only other Tomb Kings player apart from me. And look at his list. It's, it's like, it's got a Zinch theme, like Chaos Zinch, but it's a Tomb Kings army. And his theme behind the army is that it, there was the city of of Zinch worshippers in the uh, sort of whole Tomb Kings area. And uh, when they sort of came back from the dead, they were still sort of worshipping Zinch. So that's this kind of funky little theme there. And he's using his, using like horrors and conversions to represent his tomb guard in the middle. He's got a prince on a, on a, on a disc, which is like a prince on a chariot with the flail skulls. He's got three units of chariots. He's got these Shabti. 
He's got plenty of archers. He's got a screaming cell catapult, two scorpions. He's got a swarm around somewhere, I think, and two units of 